Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's uh, class on two point perspective studies. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and this is uh, part one of a two part class where we will be covering the uh, the basics of applying two-point perspective to some architectural photos that are showing two-point perspective. And if you are just joining us um, for the first time ever, this is an ongoing series that uh, I have been doing for Michael since July of 2021. And we've covered tons of topics. We've covered the absolute basics of linear perspective, uh, towards the, the beginning of the series. And then just recently I'm doing this kind of deeper dive into linear perspective and applying the basics of one, two and three point perspective to architecture. And here is our guest star, my cat Linda, who just can't help herself from jumping up on the table. If she keeps doing that, I will put her in another room. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, last month in April, we did one point perspective studies using some photographs that I provided for you. Um, and we'll be using these same photographs throughout uh, this, this series. So tonight's two point perspective and then next month I'll cover three point perspective and we'll use reference images from the, the same set of photographs that I provided for you. So I'm just going to switch to my tabletop view and we'll get right down to it and I'll go over supplies. And so basically just tonight we'll be starting to talk about two point perspective and applying it to one of these or, or two of these architectural photos. We'll see how far we get. And uh, whenever I did this for one point perspective, it was a little tight for the, the first class. So I thought I would spread this out over two hours because I wanted to make sure that we had ample time to, to talk about all the things that come up and we're not rushed through it because it can be very time consuming and there can be questions. So feel free to ask questions in the chat and Chanel can filter through uh, relevant ones. Um, and I can let you know if that anything that's asked about it was covered in a previous class as we go along. Okay, and I always just want to manage expectations. So the amount of detail that I have in this study here, yours may vary depending on what your ability is to grasp uh, the rules of linear perspective drawing as we go along here. So, you know, just manage your expectations, but these are studies, this is practice, this is an exercise, and uh, we'll be applying these these rules more to like a more stylized uh, concept later on in uh, June. So in it, but for now, we're just studying how we can find the, uh, the lines that are relevant to linear perspective in a, a photo with some architecture and all the things that come up as we're doing that and how we can sketch that out and troubleshoot issues that come along, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so make sure to tag your work if you post online with anything from tonight's class or if you make any work inspired by tonight or if you use my reference photos for something, I'd love to be tagged uh, uh, at Adrian Hodge Art on Instagram or um, you can use those hashtags, make it with Michael's or Michael's classes or both. Um, but if you tag me, I'll be sure to see them because sometimes uh, a lot of things can get buried in those hashtags. Uh, here's some of my work on my business cards. You can also find me on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. Our feline visitor just jumped up on the table again. Okay, I am using the uh, Stetler uh, sketching pencils here. Looks like I've got something else stuck to the front of that tin. Um, I'm gonna be mainly using just one or two pencils tonight. You should just stick to an H pencil. Um, oh my goodness. All right, pardon me folks. I'm gonna have to quarantine my cat out of the space because she's just driving me nuts. 
Um, I will be right back in two moments. Okay, so sorry for the interruption. Um, so we are using the Statler pencils. I'm going to be using a pencil with a B on it so that my lines will show up a little darker on the screen. You should be using an H pencil as I go along so that your lines are nice and light and easy to erase. You're definitely going to want a ruler. I've got the Westcott ruler from Michaels. I've got a Faber Castell synthetic eraser. You can really use any pencil you have on hand. Even a mechanical pencil would work fine. And then I've just got the Canson 9 by 12 drawing pad. And then those reference photos that I provided for you for all of these linear perspective studies. Just a little out of breath from running up and down my stairs real quick. Okay, so let's take a look at these photographs again. In the one point perspective studies class from last month, we sketched out this photograph that is in a one point perspective. And we also looked at, oh yeah, here it is, the one that I marked all over. So we found our vanishing point, we found the horizon line or the eye level of the viewer. We talked about how the world does not perfectly line up with the textbook examples of linear perspective and how there can be a lot of, you know, things that can be different depending on the elevation of the, the viewer when taking the, the photo or the, the elevation of the setting in the photograph can change the perspective. There can be multiple perspectives uh, visible at once, but the main idea that I wanted to get across, and you can go back and check out that one point perspective studies class where I talked about all this in a little more depth. I'm just going to quickly point out the difference in one, two and three point perspective here. Okay, so this is, and if you're like, I don't get why, then that means you need to go check out that, that other class because, you know, we've only got an hour and I can't repeat everything from, from other classes. But this is this alley uh, in one point perspective. So the viewer is standing in the center of the alley. So we only have one uh, main vanishing point here. And then this is the same alley space showing two point perspective because now I'm looking at the corner. So right here, I'm the, I, the viewer, the photographer, I'm placing myself in the middle of this alleyway. And so the side of the building is being shown using just one point perspective. But if we turn and face this corner, now we are seeing two point perspective because these the horizontal lines that are parallel and facing us when we are looking at them head on are now traveling away from us towards uh, these vanishing points on the horizon line. And so now instead of just having one vanishing point, one main vanishing point, we've got two because everything on the right side of our corner is traveling to our first vanishing point and everything on the left side of the corner is traveling to our second vanishing point. And then if I change my perspective again, this is the same building. So see this little maroon part of the, the building here? That's this. So this is the same exact building. I'm standing in the same spot. All I'm doing is I'm facing my camera down the center of the alley. I'm facing my camera at the corner of this building. And then I changed my view one more time and I looked up at the building and now I'm seeing the building 
in three-point perspective. So we'll break down three-point perspective and apply it to a photograph like this coming up uh, next month in June. But tonight we're focusing on two-point perspective. And if any of that is you know, just completely Greek to you and confusing, um, then you can go back and check out the class on one point perspective studies, or you can even go farther back in our series um, from 2021, where we covered the, just the very, very basics of one, two and three point perspective by drawing just squares and turning them into cubes in one and two and three point perspective. All right, so any questions on any of that before I get started breaking down this photograph? It doesn't appear so. All right, so. What I find to be really helpful, and this is what I did with the, uh, the one point perspective study, is to tape the image down to your uh, sketchbook. Like I'm just gonna jump to the three point perspective example from June real quick. So if you want to take this photograph and I'm just gonna do that right now and cut it out here. Um, and then we're just gonna, I didn't put tape on the supply list, but you can weight the image down with, you know, an eraser or, or whatever you need to get it to stay stationary in your sketchbook. But taping it down to the page makes it really easy to quickly find these vanishing points. So this is the, the three point perspective example and um, and I found the third vanishing point there, which is called the, the zenith point. And then I sketched that off to the side there. So that's what we'll be doing in June. And we're just gonna be focusing on one image for, for that one, because again, it can be very time consuming. Okay, and the one point perspective one is in a different sketchbook, so I'm not going to pull that one out, but we did the, the same thing with that one. So I'm just going to find a blank page here in my sketchbook and tape this down. You can also take your device if you have the image just on a cell phone or an iPad or something uh, like that. You can just put it on the table and then you can use a couple of pieces of tape on either side so that you're not drawing on the table. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. The first thing we need to do is find, I need to find my view on the camera here. Um, first I have a question for you, Adrian. Yes. Um, how, do you, how do you decide which pencil to use? I want, uh, everyone should, the, for the best results, when you're just learning to do something, use an H pencil so that your lines are really easy to erase. So you're drawing nice and light and you're not pressing down super hard on an H pencil. And I had a, the very first class in the series is probably the one I referenced the most for that question. And it was called Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms. And uh, that class explains what the letters and numbers on the side of the pencil stand for and what they mean and the optimal way to use the, uh, the H and B pencils. The only reason I'm going to use a B pencil instead of an H pencil when sketching on screen is so that my lines will be visible to you all because after teaching on Zoom for all these years now, I've realized that if I draw too light, it just will not show up on screen. So that's the only reason that I'm using a different pencil than what I recommend you use. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find our horizon line. Okay, and we did this before with uh, the, the one point perspective studies class. So I'm going to go kind of quickly here. We're just going to look at these orthogonal lines. And I feel like I'm skipping over like and just jumping right into stuff. But also I have to keep in mind that I can't repeat myself too much. So if, if it's confusing, then you can just follow along tonight and then go back and check out the one point perspective studies and all of anything I'm glossing over is definitely covered in that class. Uh, but we also have two hours for this, so I can slow down a little bit. I'm like trying to hurry up and like get to the point. Okay, so orthogonal lines. Those are the lines that if we are facing the building, like if we're facing the side of this building, we're going to see things as it really, as they really are in reality. So linear perspective is an optical illusion that we all mass hallucinate together. When we're looking at the face of a building and it's facing us head on, like these windows and lines, they're all straight and parallel and they're facing us, the viewer in the photograph. And so they appear as they actually are, which is straight and parallel. These lines are also in reality straight and parallel, but since we are viewing them from the corner like this, our perspective, our point of view, kind of shifts reality a little bit in the way that we perceive it. And so we perceive that these lines are now slanted and they become what we call orthogonal lines. And that's what, what we call them, but they don't actually change. It's just a, a perspective, right? Just like in three-point perspective, this building is not getting smaller as it goes up to you know, far, farther away in the sky. It's just my skewed perspective that makes the lines appear this way. So in one and two point perspective, vertical lines are unchanged. They stay completely straight. In three point perspective, those vertical lines, they also appear to uh, converge. And so they become orthogonal lines. But again, we'll get to that in June. So it's only the horizontal lines that are traveling away from us, the viewer, that are affected in two-point perspective. Okay, so we need to find where these vanishing points are. The vanishing points are for the linear perspective, the main linear perspective in an image, are generally going to be at the viewer's eye line. So the horizon line is going to fall at the viewer's eye line. And the way that I can find that very easily is by just looking at the orthogonal lines, taking my ruler, and just trying to find where they become straight. So they're slanted, they're slanted, they're slanted, but then they're starting to get straighter. They're starting to get straighter. And then right about here, look at that. The lines appear straight. That's the viewer's eye line. That's my eye line when I was taking the photo. Okay, so let's find where that line is straight. And we're just gonna draw a straight line across our photo. You can, if you've got this on a table surface, you can take your tape. What did I just do with my tape? Wow, amazing how quickly I can lose things in this space. So you're just gonna take a piece of tape if you're, if your photograph is, you know, too big for a piece of paper to draw on the paper and just put your tape on either side like that, and then you can draw directly on the tape. We've actually done that before in, in another class where we were breaking down a, another photograph back in that series in 2021. Okay, so we found the viewer's eye line where the line appears straight, and I kind of made it a little lopsided, so I'm going to draw it again. And then now we need to find those vanishing points. So if the printout is small enough, you should be able to find these on the piece of paper. If not, I might have to use my piece of tape if I go into no man's land. All right, so I'm just gonna take my pencil 
and my ruler, and I'm just going to start tracing lines. I'm just going to start tracing the lines on the side of this. Garage door. And you might have to trace the lines quite a bit before you find the point where they converge. I just kind of jumped down a little farther. And you can trace all of them if you need to. Okay, so I actually found I might be a little off with the, the horizon line because actually my point where they intersect is maybe here, right about there. Okay, so let me redraw my horizon line. A couple of those look kind of straight, but can be deceiving. All right. Now we do the other side, and that's how we can kind of double check it. Like if the vanishing point seems to be like in a different, on a different horizontal axis on this side, then we know our horizon line was off. We can find the point where, find the line where the vanishing points line up on the same horizontal. We're just tracing lines. That's all we're doing. This is just a way for us to troubleshoot and find the vanishing points. Okay, so it's a little higher actually on that side. And there was a point right here where they also seem to intersect. So, you know, your ruler can be off sometimes. Like I was maybe going a little fast as I was tracing some of those lines and maybe I shifted my ruler at a certain point. That's why it's good to draw and trace as many lines as possible because it's gonna be irrefutable when you can see that it lines up horizontally on both sides, right? So don't just draw that horizon line and be like, I found it, I found the straight line, you know, cause look, Mine was very off, but here it definitely is because that's where my two vanishing points line up on the same horizontal axis. Okay, so this is vanishing point one and this is vanishing point two. I have another question for you. Okay. Um, can you define the, van va the vanishing point again? I can't speak today, I guess. Um, yes, so the vanishing point is the point on the horizon line where it appears that our orthogonal lines intersect um, because these orthogonal lines are not reality. They are an optical illusion, right? So, and it depends on the viewer. So if I am, you know, standing next to somebody who's seven feet tall, their horizon line is going to be much higher than mine, right? So it is always going to depend on the, the viewer's eye line. So the horizon line rests at the viewer's eye line. And we've covered this in a lot of different ways. Um, there was a class on, uh, perspective of a coffee mug, where we looked at a coffee mug from uh, above the coffee mug, looking down at the coffee mug. So my eye line was above the coffee mug, and then where my eye line was right in the center of the coffee mug, and then when my eye line was beneath the coffee mug, so we're looking up at it, right? And we talked about how depending on where the viewer's eye line was, or where the photographer's eye line was, because we're talking about a photograph, it's going to depend on where the, the camera was resting, you know, then these 
orthogonal lines will appear to uh, curve up or down. Um, and that's speaking, you know, in regards to a coffee cup, but in regards to a, a box, which is basically what we have here, the side of this, this building is like a box or a rectangular prism, right? It's not necessarily a cube. But there is a moment where we see the, the lines as straight, and that is the viewer's eye line, and that is the uh, horizon line. And so these parallel horizontal lines that would be straight if we were facing them appear to be traveling away from us towards the, the horizon line. And so they uh, appear to converge at these points. In one point perspective, they all converge at one point in the, the center of the view when you're looking down the center of something, when you're looking at the corner of something, they're going to appear to converge um, to either side of the corner. And if that's still confusing, then uh, definitely check out that other class because I, I break it down a lot slower. I just, again, I don't want to repeat myself too much, even though I already am repeating myself quite a bit. Um, in the person said that was very helpful, but she did have a follow-up question. Oh, okay. Um, can the vanishing point, does the vanishing point point always appear in the middle or can it appear in the top or the bottom? So when we talk about three point perspective, there will be a vanishing point at the, the top and the bottom, but we're just talking about two point perspective tonight. So in one and two point perspective, the vertical lines remain straight. They remain as they are um, in reality. We see them as, as straight vertical lines. Although I talked about this in the, the other class, this photo is actually a tiny bit in three-point perspective because the vertical lines do appear to converge a little bit, but we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the one-point perspective studies class where we're just gonna make them straight for the sake of not complicating things. Um, but yes, and three point perspective in June, we'll, we'll talk about what happens to those vertical lines uh, when viewed far above or far below the, the horizon line. Okay, so I wanna talk about these lines over here. So uh, just because something is on the left side of this corner, just because the, uh, the horizontal or orthogonal lines are on the left side of this corner and here they are converging to our first vanishing point. That doesn't mean that everything is doing that. So it depends on which direction the horizontal lines are traveling. So these are not traveling away from us to the left. They are traveling away from us to the right. So these lines over here are facing our vanishing point two on the right side. So we're going to map all this out when we start to sketch this. So I just want to make sure I point that out. Um, and likewise, the top of this little awning right here is doing the same thing. It's traveling towards our vanishing point on the left side. So just because something is, you know, to the left or the right of the corner doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, it's vanishing point one or vanishing point two. It depends on which direction those horizontal lines are traveling because they're they're straight lines if I were to face the side of this building and face this head on these are straight parallel horizontal lines they only uh, this is the true nature of these garage indentions they're straight they only appear to undergo this change because of the optical illusion Okay, any other questions about that? I'm sure there's gonna be more as we keep going, but anything else jumping out? That's it for now. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna do a risky thing and just pause for one more moment and uh, let the cat out of the bedroom that I put her in because I'm worried about her being trapped in there. Um, and hopefully she won't keep jumping up on my desk. Okay, 
and I saw somebody type the word orthogonal in the, the chat there. I'm just going to write that out. Orthogonal lines. So the definition of that is they are horizontal lines that appear to converge towards a vanishing point on the, the horizon or to a vanishing point, because yeah, it's in three point perspective. That third vanishing point is not on the horizon line, but we'll get to that later. And if you're like, I can't stand the suspense, you can go check out the classes from 2021, where we just, you know, cover the absolute basics of drawing a cube, rectangular prism in one, two, and three point perspective. Okay, so let's sketch a little box over here and break down this image even more. So I'm going to take my ruler and I think the easiest way to do this is to just measure your printout. So it's going to be different depending on how you printed the photo out if you did print it out. Or you can just, you know, randomly draw a box, but it's easy to do it this way because then I can kind of use the photograph um, as a, oh geez, Linda, okay. Maybe I might just let her be there as long as she's off screen. She's not bothering and be our little guest star. Okay, so gotta settle down though. All right, so I'm going to draw a box that is um, four by four by five. All right. Yep. So I'm just going to take my ruler and sketch out. Navigating my guest star here, just a, just a moment. Okay, she's good. She was fine until I had to go moving the ruler around. Let's draw it up here. All right, so I got my four inches by five inches. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm asking for it. I could have just left her in the bedroom. And we don't really need this box to be perfect. In fact, in the other study, I think I just sketched it out very casually while sitting on the couch. So it doesn't have to be. Oh, that is not right though. Hang on, let me measure that again. Oh, I drew a three inch box. Sake of time, I'm going to go to the next page. All right, there's four inches. All right, so the easiest way to do it is to just kind of look at my photograph and I can measure in my photograph using my ruler. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just an approximate measurement of where the horizon line is from that, uh, the bottom and the top of the frame of the photograph. So in five inches, it is just below the halfway point. So then I can just come over here to my 
other box that I drew and just find that moment at about three and a quarter. So it wasn't quite, or I'm sorry, two and a quarter inches up. That's where the horizon line was. And then I just wanna make sure that this line is straight and horizontal. So I'm lining up uh, the side of the lines on the ruler with those vertical lines that I drew so that I can make sure that I'm drawing a nice straight line. And then I want it to go outside of the frame on both sides so that I can get my vanishing points on there. And then same idea and go over here and you can eyeball this. You don't have to measure this with your ruler. Uh, the thing that I said in the one point perspective studies class that's worth repeating is that I know that architectural drawing can be extremely complicated and confusing, and I'm just trying to demystify it in a way that makes it, you know, approachable and not so uh, confusing. So we're not going to get hung up on making this absolutely perfect here. We're going to get the general idea so that you can happily go along and maybe even sketch the same thing without a ruler. I know that may sound crazy to you, but I do a lot of urban sketching and I do not use a ruler when I'm just sketching something. I take a visual note of where the horizon line is, where that uh, you know equ equator line is, and then I make a kind of visual guess at where the top and bottom of this rectangular prism is. And then I just start sketching and I just make sure that my orthogonal lines gradually become straight as they get towards that, that equator line, the horizon line. There's a way to do this without a ruler is what I'm telling you. We don't have to you know, belabor everything and make it absolutely perfect. And just like I said, we're gonna kind of ignore the fact that this is this photograph is slightly in three point perspective because we'll drive ourselves nuts trying to get this absolutely you know perfect as we go along. And I'll admit, I sketched this without doing all these steps without um, without a well, I did use the ruler, um, but I didn't really get it exact. I just sort of looked at the image on my phone and I started sketching something very similar in my sketchbook while sitting on the couch watching a, a movie. So I did that very casually as I was preparing for the class tonight. Um, so I just want to make sure that nobody's getting like too hung up on all of these rules. We're just kind of looking at the, the general guidelines of Some of these questions that I'm hearing, it's sounding like a lot of us in the crowd are absolute, you know, beginners to this topic. So definitely don't want to overwhelm anybody. And I pointed out in the um, other class, just in the one point perspective studies class, we spent quite a bit of time talking about this, this concept and how, you know, what we see in textbooks, examples in elementary school, or grade school, or maybe even high school, when we're learning a uh, linear perspective, oftentimes those are very, you know, forced uh, kind of cartoon like images of like the center of train tracks or the center of a hallway. But the real world and the way that we perceive it with our eyes kind of creates like a fishbowl lens a lot of times. And we, things can be very distorted and there can be multiple perspectives visible at once because of elevation, because of interesting architecture, or just because of where the person is pointing uh, the camera. And I'll get into that even more again when we talk about three-point perspective. Okay, so we're going to make this line straight, this vertical line at the center, even though it is slightly off center in the photograph. So we're just going to find our, our center here, this corner. And we're going to draw that in the, the center of the page. And it is, I mean, if you wanted to get it right around where it is in the photograph, it's pretty in the middle. It's almost right there on the eight. 
between my six and my 10. So in between my four inches, it is right in the middle, but we're gonna go a little bit down from the top of our frame because we wanna leave a little space for that awning. So we're gonna go right about here in the center and then we're gonna stop and give ourselves some space right about there, about a third of the way from the bottom. Okay, so we have our vertical and horizontal axis now. So we have our corner. So we have the top of our corner right here, but we've got another little corner over here too. We don't wanna to forget about that one, but we'll, we'll get to that one in a bit. Okay, so I went and scooted this one right where my vanishing point is like going over the rings of the, the sketchbook here. I did not think this out. So I don't wanna skew it too much. My vanishing point is actually over here, like over the top of my spirals. So that was not a smart move. Um, so I actually am going to just kind of eyeball sketch it but you take your ruler and you try to line it up with the horizon line about as far away. And you could even measure it again, if you want to be more exact, we could measure that it is about two and a quarter inches away from the edge of the photograph. So I could go over here and measure two and a quarter inches, which is right smack in the center of my, <laughs> my spiral here, right about there. That's where my vanishing point is. Okay, so hopefully you didn't do this to yourself. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and line it up for the sake of accuracy and just do that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna start scooting my ruler down and drawing this line from going to be so tricky. I cannot believe I did that. Look, if I do it on that side, I can get it right there. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up with my vanishing point and then just start scooting my ruler a little bit, maybe like a quarter of an inch every time, and then drawing my orthogonal lines that are traveling to my vanishing point one. And we're just sketching, it's just a study. So don't worry about making this look like a garage yet. We're just finding the placement of these lines. Now that we're at this point in the class, I'll relax a little bit. I was just trying to make sure I could cover all the, the introductory concepts and get all our questions answered and start sketching. But this is why I wanted to make it a two-part class because with the one hour for one point perspectives, we were very rushed towards the end to get it to look like our architecture and I may be pushed us a little too quickly. So, all right, so I hit the equator line. I hit the, the straight horizontal line. And then now my orthogonal lines are, are dipping down. They were slanting up from the vanishing point. The diagonal was going in an upward direction from the vanishing point. And now it appears like these lines are pointing down. And I maybe am drawing way too many of them. But they are kind of close together because, well, yeah, that was still maybe too many. All right, well, I'm getting close to my bottom of my corner. Okay. So we'll worry about what's happening right here in just a minute, but this is 
going to get erased right there because that's where the, the other side of the garage switches on the other side of that that other corner. All right, we'll worry about that in a minute. OK, so now let's find our vanishing point two. So from the edge of the photograph, it is about an inch and a half away. And that's, you know, because I measured and made my box the same size. If you didn't make your box the same size, then you kind of just have to eyeball this. And it's possible. Okay, so now I'm going to line up the top of our corner with our second vanishing point. And you can label these if you didn't, you know, draw them in the spiral of your notebook. Vanishing point one and two. Draw a little arrow to it. Vanishing point one. So silly. When I was teaching high school one time, I was trying to help a student find the vanishing point in a really complicated photograph. And the view was so skewed that we had to run a piece of tape in order to find the vanishing point and draw it on, um, you know, to draw it on the table, on the piece of tape. We had to run the piece of tape down the entire length of her table and the table of the, you know, the next table next to her. And she was like, we don't have to do it. And I was like, no, we're doing it. And we pulled out a piece of tape and ran it all the way there. And I got a yardstick and I got another yardstick. And we just used the yardsticks to, to trace those lines because it's so helpful. And why not? Why not do the things that illuminate you know, this and make it easier for you to grasp? Because it's a lot. It's a lot to just understand it, just period, just to understand it with your brain. And then it's a whole other thing to draw it. And then if you really want a mind stretch, try teaching it. <laughs> um, so yeah, be easy on yourself because it is tricky and if you feel like it's silly to get out the piece of tape just to sketch this line to this point and like you've got a grasp on it without that but you're still struggling with it just do it it's so helpful and it's easier if the photograph is small like this and can fit on a piece of paper but it's not always going to be the case And your lines can be off if you're accidentally bumping your ruler as you're doing this, as you're scooching it down, you could be bumping it off of your vanishing point. So, you know, this may not be perfect the first time that you do it or something might be off, but the general idea that we want to make sure is happening in your photograph is that, yeah, like those kind of got away from me a little bit there. Um, but the general idea is that they are all traveling down or it's, it's up or down depending on where you're like from the vanishing point they're traveling up above the, the horizon line and then below the vanishing point they're traveling down or you might say they're traveling down from the corner towards the vanishing point but yeah I was definitely bumping my ruler a little bit there and making those not quite even, maybe even not all perfectly originating from my vanishing point, but it's close enough to get the point across. Oops. And if we didn't have all these lines on the garage door, I wouldn't advise we draw this many, but it's going to be the same thing when we do that skyscraper and three point perspective. It's a lot of windows inside of a building like that. Okay, so let's talk about this other corner moment over here. Okay, so all you really need to 
understand is that this needs to be a vertical line right here. And so we're just going to take our ruler and line it up with the, uh, the straight line at the top of our picture frame or the straight line of our horizon line. Hopefully that is a straight line. And then we're just going to draw a vertical line that stops and starts at the top and bottom of our orthogonals right there. And then we're just going to erase all of those here. We don't need those. And then we want to take our ruler and line it up with vanishing point two. And that's how we find the top of that other corner. So lining it up with the edge of the corner and the edge of the vanishing point and then drawing the line there and then same thing with the bottom lining it up with the bottom of the corner and my second vanishing point and drawing that there and while we're on the topic let's go ahead and do the other confusing Part of the photograph and that's this little awning right here where it does the same sort of thing. Okay so we're going to find this vertical line first so we can find that corner and we're pretending this is an absolutely straight line that it's not skewed in any way because it actually is a little skewed um, but we're, we're just making these lines straight here. So actually we need to find this vertical line first. So I can measure where that corner is happening from the edge of my photograph. And it's about just under an inch in. And it's about a little over half an inch down. So I'm going to go an inch in from the side of my photograph right about there and then it was a, about an inch down or a little under an inch so i think i drew it in the spot i want it to be well but then it's here it's actually i'm gonna draw it right here again it doesn't have to be perfect folks so we'll get our our other straight vertical line right there. Okay. And then now we can use vanishing point one to tell us where that corner juts out. And I'm just going to eyeball it how far it goes. I'm going to take this, this point at the top of my corner and I'm going to line it up with finishing point one. And then I'm just going to go boop like that. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then, and I may be adding a little more links on this more than I need, but that's okay. And then I'm going to make this a vertical line right here. And then now I've got the the edge of that little awning. And I'm going to line that corner up, this corner with vanishing point two. And draw that line. Okay, and then we don't see, you know, this corner edge. This just keeps going and going. So we see this line traveling like that and then and then we see a couple of lights right here and if you look really closely it maybe isn't showing up on the zoom but if you you know have the digital version of the photograph there are these little lines these grooves here and those are all traveling to vanishing point one. And the ones on the other side are traveling to vanishing point two. 
So we can draw all those if we want, or we can just maybe find the line of them that the lights are on, which is right about here, and go ahead and just sketch those lights right on that line. And then if you want to fill in the rest of those, they're just all going to line up with, with vanishing point one. Okay. And then here's where it's a little tricky is all of these little grooves are also lined up with vanishing point one. But it just depends. And you can just take your ruler. If at any point you're like, you know, I'm confused which direction, you know, just line up the orthogonal lines and see do they line up with vanishing point one or do they line up with vanishing point two? Like these line up with vanishing point two. These line up with vanishing point one. And these also line up with vanishing point one. It's the same, same sort of lines. Oh my goodness, we have reached the end of the class. That was fast. Okay, so it's good that we made this two parts because we've still got a lot to cover. Um, so next week we will just pick up where we left off on this one. We'll talk about like things like the leaves in the um, photograph, you know, and the, the more organic things that we're seeing in the image, like the value here and the value on the side of the building and the leaves and that sort of stuff um, and how we can make a sketch like this pop really quickly. And then if we have time, I wanted to uh, apply these same ideas to another uh, two point perspective image in this set and I wanted to look at this one. So if there's time, we'll look at this one because it's the same sort of idea. We've got the main vertical axis on uh, this building and we've got vanishing point one over here, vanishing point two over here. This is where the eye level is up here on the 21st floor window that I'm facing out of. But then we've got the stuff on the street. So the street lines are going to either vanishing point one or vanishing point two. It gets real complicated, but as long as we've got a ruler and some patience, we can figure it out and we'll see how far we can get sketching out the, uh, the linear perspective in that image next week. So um, does anybody want to share their uh, sketches from tonight? I'm just letting the cat be here now. Um, if you want to hold up your sketches, I love to see a page of notes. If you've got some notes, I love to see it. Oh, look at that. And you've already got some value going. You got further than me. That looks great. Lovely. Oh, drawing nice and light so that you can go back and uh, darken things later when you're sure about it. That looks amazing. That is really coming along. Your lines are, are really, oh, I like that you're using a different photograph, applying all these rules to your own photograph. Oh, that is just makes me so happy. And that is incredible. Yeah, all those bricks are, are following these, these rules of linear perspective. That's where it's really easy to get kind of, I don't want to use the word lazy, but it is really easy to get lazy and just let it fall apart. But Oh, that's amazing. And all that value inside those alcoves, that's amazing. Wonderful work there. Let's see, you wanna hold it up? Hi. All right, yeah. And yeah, maybe with the, the ruler, like you, I know I was going a little fast too. So we gotta slow down when we, we get to the you know, when we're lined up with that vanishing point. But I love that you took all those notes. I love a page of notes. Makes me so happy. Thank you. All right. Nice and light. I think we already saw this one. But it's still great. All right, yes. Putting it on the same page is very helpful because then you can really just transfer everything top to bottom there. Gorgeous. And I love the notes. I don't know what it is 
about notes that makes me so happy, but it does. Very nice. Yeah. All right. I love that you're like right with me there too. That one's like just as far as I, as I got. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, these are really coming along. I feel like I did my job when I see so many wonderful examples and hope this was very helpful. Thank you all so much for sharing. Uh, feel free to go to my Instagram and uh, follow me. I've added um, some new links to my link tree recently. Like if you're interested in private lessons, I'm offering private lessons again now and consulting for uh, art artists. Uh, if you want some advice on your art career, I offer, offer consulting services as well as private lessons. And you can book those directly. I put little links in my link tree where you can just go ahead and just book a, a, a session with me if you're interested in private lessons. Uh, thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening. See you next week for part two. Bye.